and the Steelers entering a bye week in week nine of the NFL season, but they were active during Tuesday's trade deadline, trading Chase Claypool to the Chicago Bears, and that's where we'll start today's show. And I think this trade, and I had recorded immediate reaction immediately after it happened before yesterday's 4 p.m. Eastern deadline. I think this trade is a win-win for both teams, and let me explain my logic here. The Steelers aren't going to make the playoffs this season at 2-6. and six. Since the NFL moved to a 16-game regular season schedule in 1978, there is one team that has gone on to make the playoffs after a 2-6 and six start. You're talking about your 2020 Washington football team. When the Washington football team won the NFC East with a 7-9 and nine record. So you can eliminate the playoffs. Claypool under contract through this season and through next season on his rookie deal, a second round pick out of Notre Dame in 2020. And he showed signs of promise, at least when Ben Roethlisberger was the quarterback. But at this point now, he has two years left on his rookie deal. If he's not going to help you this year, who knows what will the Steelers will look like in the 2023 season. The Steelers can essentially reload and they get a second round pick back from the Bears and they get the Bears pick, too, because remember, the Bears have a ton of draft picks. They could have traded back the Ravens pick, but they get the Chicago Bears pick. And also, in this Claypool deal, there were reports that the Packers also wanted Chase Claypool and also offered the Steelers a second-round pick. Both the Bears and Packers stand at 3-5 and five right now, and the Steelers think the Bears are going to have a worse record. This, to me, makes sense considering the Bears traded two of their star defensive players in Robert Quinn and Roquan Smith. So the Steelers are bottoming out. The Bears potentially get uh the Bears potentially get Justin Fields some help on the outside because the upcoming free agent receiver class is weak. And the Bears have Darnell Mooney, but other than the two running backs in David Montgomery and Khalil Herbert in the backfield. Who do the Bears really have around Justin Fields that's going to be there for the foreseeable future? So the Bears get a a receiver still on his rookie contract. Two years left. You can evaluate what he does for the remainder of this season and next season. And then the Bears can decide, okay, do we want to offer Chase Claypool a lucrative contract extension or do we want to let him test the free agent market? Remember, the Steelers gave Deontay Johnson a huge contract extension in the offseason and George Pickens looks like he's the part as a rookie. We don't know what Calvin Austin the third will do, considering he's going to be done for the rest of the year. He had foot surgery on IR for the rest of the year. And the rest of the Steelers receivers, I'm talking about Steven Sims, Gunnar Oshesky, Miles Boykin. They will have the opportunity to prove themselves now. But the one position group, maybe other than linebacker, that the Steelers know, draft, and develop the best is the receiver position. They've done it time and time and time and time again. So the fact that the Steelers got a second round pick for Claypool to where they can reload and then get a new rookie deal for four years for a second round pick from the Bears. Again, it's why I think this is potentially a win-win for both teams. The Bears also keep Claypool away from the Packers as well. So I don't want I don't want to I don't want to belittle that point either because the Packers tried to get Aaron Rodgers some help. And it didn't happen. Claypool, Robbie Anderson, and Kadarius Toney all dealt before the trade deadline in recent weeks. There were other receivers out on the market. I'm talking about Brandon Cooks, Elijah Moore, Jerry Judy, all reportedly on the market. But the Packers don't help Aaron Rodgers at all. Again, the Bears are going to be fine. They still have several picks. They have a first rounder. They have a second round draft pick. Still, even though they just dealt one to the Steelers, they have a third rounder, two fourth rounders, two fifth rounders, a seventh rounder. And oh, by the way, the Bears have more than $100 million in salary cap space next offseason. So help is on the way for Justin Fields. Now, if the Steelers season ended today, they would have the fourth, 36th, and 44th overall picks in the 2023 draft. So help's coming for the Steelers as well. Remember, during the Mike Tomlin era, he's in year 16. He's squaring dead in the eye his first losing season during his tenure in Pittsburgh. The highest draft pick the Steelers have had, number 10 when they took Devin Bush. And remember, they traded up to get Bush. So the Steelers haven't gone this high in the draft in a long, long time. And if the Steelers aren't going to make the playoffs, this is a very jaded perspective. 
and certainly you want to foster a winning culture. But Steelers fans should actually hope that the team loses on out if they're not going to make the playoffs because then you get a better draft pick. I kind of liken it to several years ago, the Steelers were playing Washington and Mike Tomlin's talking with Chase Young, the star defensive end out of Ohio State. I believe he was a rookie at the time and he just looks at him and I'm paraphrasing here and says, hey, we don't draft high enough to get guys that look like you. Well, this upcoming off season in 2023, the Steelers very well might. Uh, Claypool, 6'4", 4'4", speed, size and speed that he'll bring to Chicago. Cut nine touchdowns as a rookie at 11 touchdowns overall. Remember that tied a Steelers franchise rookie record. And four of those touchdowns in the 2020 season when Ben Roethlisberger was the quarterback came on go routes. And so this season, the Steelers have struggled to throw the ball down the field. True media shows that Claypool is third in the NFL and go routes run this season with 86. He has one reception on those routes. You can blame Matt Canada. You can blame the scheme. You can blame all of that. When push comes to shove, whether it's been Trubisky or Kenny Pickett back there, they haven't gotten the ball consistently to chase Claypool to show what he's capable of because the measurables are there with Claypool. And even when he struggled a season ago, when he was celebrating, when they needed to conserve as much clock as they could against the Vikings last season, for Claypool, it was all, he has everything you want from the shoulders down. It's all up here. It's all the mental game. So maybe he can get right with Justin Fields. Remember, he was also college teammates with Bears, Ted, and Cole Komet. So they get a Notre Dame reunion in Chicago. And happy trails to Chase Claypool because I don't think he fully reached his potential in Pittsburgh, but the Steelers get good value back in a second round pick because whoever they end up drafting to replace Claypool in the 2023 draft will be under that rookie contract for four seasons. Remember, Claypool under contract through this season, through next season, and then someone's going to have to pay him. I don't know if he'll make top dollar. I'm not saying he's a number one receiver in this league. He might be an average number two, but someone's going to pay him. And the Steelers don't really do that. They don't do that because of their track record of success in drafting and developing young receivers, as good as any franchise in the league. And it's why I like this deal for both teams. I truly think it's a win-win for both the Steelers and the Chicago Bears. If you think I'm dead wrong, let me know in the comments. I would love to hear any other feedback, but I don't think the Steelers fully tapped into Chase Claypool's capability. One final thought I have on that too, Claypool used a little bit differently this year, more in the slot, taking over for Juju Smith-Schuster, whereas I think he played on the outside more during his his, in the 2020 season and 2021 season during his time in Pittsburgh when Juju would still be in the slot. Just something I've noticed in watching Steelers games.